And then you also had some very striking imagery of burnt out buildings. Can you talk a little bit about your, your so, Yeah, I will we'll do it quickly and then I will leave Barry because I think maybe it's more imp important for you the meeting with him tonight. So it's, uh, first of all, is the, there were a few elements which I took from the vision of Barry because it's very difficult for me to write a story with an American coming to Romania and never been in America. Well, I think Barry Gifford is one of the few Americans except my former boss in the company I was working before, which was American. So I don't know too much about that. Uh, the, so I, I took his vision. We, we witnessed some, some of these buildings. You can find them, you can easily find them in Ukraine, in Russia, in whatever, even in East Germany. It's like, you know, the apocalypse was there, the hol Holocaust was there, and you find these cities. For instance, the one you saw, it was, it was a, an old factory. I mean, it's not that old. From the communist regime, they, they, they abandoned it. And, and there, there are some other buildings which you might see, like the one in the cities where they go together, which Braila is one of the most beautiful cities in, in Europe, I would say, and it was one of the most Im important ones in the 19th century, even for America, because, for instance, I think the Boston Serial Stock Exchange was calling Braila each day at that time because it was one of the most important harbors in, in, the, in, in the trade of cereals in Europe. And, and it was one, a wonderful place full of live palaces and villas and, and, and houses which lately they was transformed into a kind of a ghost, ghost cities. So when we start doing the movie we, we needed some, some real locations. This is how it came up, the, the story of Sami. Sami, me and Barry, we know him because he was the only living Jew in Siret. But for us wasn't that important, let's say, the Holocaust backup story, but more his personal drama, which was he was from father to son, from grandfather to son, a film projectionist in a cinema theater in Romania, and he was, cha he was chasing away from, from, from the mayor from there. Because one of the issues we have is that we don't respect our monuments anymore, and, and this is how we came up with the idea of showing, you know, also the beauty and also what we when I'm saying we, I'm referring to me and my fellow Romanians, we have done to that, that country and leaving it, you know, falling apart. And we, we were in the original, the cinema, which was called the Excelsior. <laughs> then the name was forcibly changed to the Gorky Cinema. Maxim Gorky, yeah. For a while, right. And then... Which was better than Stalin, actually, Gorky. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, they made some concession, you know, there. And then, uh, and then it, it was changed again just to, I don't know, Sirat Cinema or whatever it was, but the... Casa de Cultura, and then... Yeah, Casa de Cultura, yeah. see, but, but then it was amazing when we walked into this cinema with Sammy, and just the way it looked was really kind of remarkable, run down, and I was introduced to, to Sammy, and you have to understand, this is really an outpost, this is out of nowhere. I mean, it's just kind of amazing, this place. And he took me to the office, to his office right there, and he had a big poster of Wild at Heart <laughs> on his wall. And, you know, he said, why didn't you tell me you were coming? <laughs> that was pretty remarkable coincidence. Yeah. And actually, the, the subplot of, of, of Sami being chastened by this wasn't, and it's, it's not exactly like that in Almost Oriental. So when we started shooting the movie, we, I heard on the news the story of a guy in Bukovina who was car doing the caravan tour with, with some old, with a 16 millimeter or 35 old projector and showing <coughs> movies to the people. So there was, the, the subplot was totally changed in that moment and we change it and we change it all the time which it's with the goods and the bads in what we see in the final movie. Oh no, I love that movie. part. That's entirely Luchan's doing. I love that part. Let's get, have this woman up here. Yes, you. The most difficult was Barry to get. It right? <laughs> was It was the forest. Well, Marcel, Marcel Ure, she's a very good friend of mine. I mean, that's another, I mean, maybe there's still a way that things are, 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 are done in the United States. I don't know, I think there's some people who are doing movies like this here in the States before, like Jim Jarmusch, for instance. But it's, it's a buddy movie. It's, it's a film made by friends. So Marcel is an all-time friend. 
we met together with Barry in Transylvania years ago. They loved each other. They, they're, they're good friends too. So, and when, when Marcel was in, in Los Angeles, I think the last time when he did Pirates of the Caribbean, he met Barry. So we were kind of, you know, together. And uh, the rest is, Mihaela was, she was my, she was a colleague of mine in, in the film and theater school. She's, she's that, that's her debut. She's just been in the Berlin Film Festival right now. And she was very, very well received. And uh, she's, a, she's a great theater actress. On the other hand, she's an improvisation master. So uh, the, the most difficult cast to get was old Sammy because, uh, you know, we needed a character which he was 70 plus, 80 somewhere there, and Barry uh, was seeing him as a as a character who s does speak English because, or or at least a sort of an English because he was learning English from the movies, and that was the most difficult cast to get because the, all the actors above 60 were talking Russian, not English. So we found this gentleman, which is a great theater actor, actually, and uh, he said he knows English, and we sent him a scene. We, 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 had a, we, had a, a, we made a test, or how you call this here, a casting probe with him and Marcel, and everything was perfect. But then when we started the shooting, we ended up learning that he was, you know, I, I don't want to repeat this, because otherwise I can get in, in, into, a, into a court, uh, whatever. So he didn't basically knew very well English, but. On the other hand, he's, he's one of the most greatest actors I've met, so we managed even then improvising to get the whole part improvised at the end of the day. But so, yeah. and Barry, Barry was the last cast to be in, so he was, uh, uh, he was the, the idea of my, my co-producer who said, why don't we get Barry Gifford in playing one part? And I thought he's crazy, but then we, we asked Barry to do it, and finally he accepted. So I think it's great to have all these friends into the movie. I did it for the money. <laughs> yeah. uh, we paid for, him a lot for yeah. friendship, but yeah. but actually the actress that I wanted to particularly single out was the woman on the bus. Yeah, when he's first on the bus, I forget her name. Mirella. So she's uh, she was maybe you saw her in Tuesday after Christmas of Radu Montano. She I think she got an, an, uh, a nomination in Cannes like two years ago. She's, no, a, great, she's, she's a wonderful, a wonderful actress. Yeah.